fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Missouri River. Hell, Silver! Fire! The moon was bright as the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up on the banks of the upper Missouri. One of the great river boats, ablaze with light, was steaming past, and faintly, below the sound of the paddle wheels, the masked man and the Indian could hear music and singing on board. That's a Davy Crockett, Kimosabe. Captain Weatherby is the skipper. Ah. It's a strange sight up here. Two or three hundred people, music and dancing on board. Nothing but forest on either side of the river. You look, both head to this bank. And the pilot knows his business. Maybe a sandbar in the middle. Oh, can't you think maybe them tie up here? Yes, it's possible. The boats usually keep going when the moon's as bad as this, though. Ah. Yeah, but you're right. You see the men on the lower deck getting ready with the lines. And this is not a good place to tie up. Plenty Indian around here. Not good Indian. Looks like a fight going on. What do you mean? With the gangplank. Get right a little closer and find out what it's about. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The steamboat slowly steamed into the wooded cove. Then the engines were cut as she nosed the bank. Near the gangplank on the lower deck, Captain Weatherby stood beside two young men, well dressed in frock coats and flowered waskets. They were objecting strenuously, but the captain cut them short with a gesture as he turned to the deck crew. Take fast those lines! Aye, aye, skipper! Now down with the gangplank! Aye, aye, sir! There you are, gents. This is where you get off. You can't do this to us, Captain. Can't I? I can do anything I want aboard my own boat. That forest out there. How are we going to find our way through it? All of the river. We haven't any horses. And what about Indians? Now, look, Captain, listen to reason. Uh, the rule is that there's no gambling on the Davy Crockett. The sign's posted all over. All right, we'll give you our word that it won't happen again. Uh, there's only way I can, uh, one way I can be sure of that. Well, we gave back the money we won. Uh, yes, and I gave you back your passage money, all of it. I get moving down that gangplank, or I'll have the boys give you a lift. Captain, what's the matter? For the last time. Come on, Greg, we have no choice. <laughs> oh, well... We've been in worse spots. I'm ready. Now, this will be a lesson to every professional gambler on the river. From now on, they'll steer clear of the Davy Crockett. Stand by to cast off, men! Men 
start to walk now. Yes, Kimosabe. The captain wasn't as hard on them as he pretended to be. Parish Landing is less than two miles up the river. Ah, uh, that place where woodcutters live. Bill Parrish and his brother Ed. They have plenty of horses and those gamblers can buy some. Uh, maybe them wait for next boat. There won't be another one heading upstream for a week. I think they'll buy horses. Uh, maybe so. We'll follow them, Tonto. Not close enough to be seen. Just in case there are Indians around. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. The two young gamblers found only one of the parish brothers at the landing. But he gladly offered them a bed for the night. In the morning, they woke up to find breakfast ready on the table. And after they had eaten, their host sold them two horses and all the supplies they needed. When the transaction was completed... Here they are, gents. They're on in the bay, all saddled, ready to go. What do we owe you? Uh, two horses, two saddles, supplies. $350. What about putting us up last night? Aren't you going to charge for that? Yeah, I should say not. That was a pleasure. With that up at Fort Benton, it gets mighty lonely around here. I was glad to have your company. $350, you say? Well, here's my half. Here's mine. Oh, oh look. A deck of cards. Hmm. Oh, you carry your own? Oh, usually. But they don't belong in my pocket. Say, I've got an idea. Do you like to take a chance, Bill? Sometimes. What do you say we cut for the horses? Double or nothing? Oh, I'd like to take a chance, all right. Fine, fine. Shuffle the cards, Silver. Wait a minute. Somehow I don't think there'd be much chance connected with that deal. What do you mean? Just what I said. I'll be satisfied with the 350 Listen, mister, if you're accusing me... I didn't me say of... a word. But maybe you'd better take a look at this note. Hmm. Where'd you get this? Somebody slipped it under the door during the night. Who wrote it? How should I know? What's it say? Don't gamble with your guests. You lose. What the... It bl- sounds like a friendly warning to me. So if you don't mind... Wait, I'll... here, here's your money. <laughs> Thanks. Now, who wrote that? We'll find out. <laughs> Get up there, boy. Get up. up. (laughs) Adios. Bill had suggested that instead of following the banks of the winding river, they take the forest trail. So Greg and Silk headed straight west. The trail was wide, but the great trees met overhead, and even at noon they rode through shadows. Silk became a little worried. You think we've made a mistake? How? By not sticking to the river. You heard what Perry said. This trail through the forest saves us a couple of hundred miles, and there's no chance of missing it. It's practically a road. Not to travel. The wagon tracks we've been following couldn't have been made any later than yesterday. Might have been today. Even so, Greg, the forest is awfully thick around here. And Perry had to admit there were Indians. Well, our horses are good. If we can't outshoot them, we can outrun them. Maybe. I only wish we'd stick. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa there, whoa. That shot wasn't far away. You're telling me. More of them, though. Maybe the wagon's just up ahead of us. One of the men could have taken a shot at a deer. Yeah, that's it. No, it isn't. Well, which way do we ride? Do we hit the back trail, or do we ride and see what it's about? I'll flip a coin. Call it. Heads we go on, tails we play it safe. It's tails. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, let's go on anyway. Kino. Get up there. Come on, Ed. Get up. Ahead of them on the trail, a covered wagon had been pulled up. On the seat were a middle-aged woman and a 16-year-old boy. Both of them were tense, waiting, searching the tangled forest. A boy held a rifle ready for action. What about it, Jimmy? Do you see any sign of him? No more. I wonder if you hit him. Oh, I don't think so. He didn't let out any yell. Maybe you shouldn't have fired. I had to. He meant business. Just look at that arrow sticking in the side of the wagon. We should have listened to what they told us back at Plainsville. Oh, we'd have had to wait a month for a wagon train. Just the same. Oh, don't get nervous, Ma. After all, there was only one engine. What do you say we drive on? Listen. I hear them. Horses. They'll be coming around that bend in minutes. Uh, Yeah. Is it the engines? I don't think so. They keep back in the trees, and from the sound of those hoofbeats, I'd say the horses were shod. Most engines... There they are. Why, a couple of travelers like us. Howdy. Hello there. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. We heard shooting. Anything wrong? Well, Jimmy saw an engine back in the trees. He shot that arrow at us. Well, that's bad. If there's one engine, there's apt to be a lot more. We'd sure appreciate it if you was to ride away with us, mister. Indeed we would. I'm Martha Winton. This is my son, Jimmy. We're on our way to the diggings at Alder to meet my husband. Uh, howdy, ma'am. Howdy. I'll flip, Greg. We'll keep you company, ma'am. 
But heads we go on, tails we turn back to Plainsville. It's tails. Well, we don't want to turn back. There's a long trail ahead of us. All right, then. We'll up your horses, son. We'll ride along beside you. Oh, get ready to shoot. Here comes an engine now. There's a masked man with him. Put down those guns. Not on your life. Oh, he shot the gun right out of his hand. Steady, Silver, steady. We aren't outlaws. We're friends. You listen to what masked friends say. There's a band of 20 Indians half a mile away. They're getting ready to attack. Oh, golly. There's no chance to stand them off here. And if we can make the hill beyond the next rise, we'll have some cover. They're cave inside a hill. It's large enough to drive the horses and wagon inside. You lead the way, mister. Come on, then. Get up there. Come on. Get up. The little party reached the cave just in time. No sooner had the men taken their positions behind the rocks at the entrance than the war party burst through the cover of the forest and raced toward them. But the savages were armed for the most part with bows and arrows. Only a few had rifles, and the deadly fire from the cave's opening drove them back, broke their courage, and sent them down the trail in full retreat. When Jimmy had driven the wagon out on the trail once more, the Lone Ranger drew the two gamblers aside. I hope you're going to ride on with Mrs. Winton and her son. Yes, I guess we will. Yeah, I'm glad. By the time you got to older, you may have learned something. What's that? You might even change your way of making a living. What are you driving at? Yeah. Just what's wrong with the way we make our living? You're gamblers. How do you know? Well, from the way you're dressed, for one thing. For another, Todd and I watched you get off the Davy Crockett below Perry's Landing. You were there? And this must be the army that left the note with Bill. That's right. I did. You got a lot of nerve. We're much obliged for the help you gave us just now, but nobody's going to call us crooked and get away with it. I didn't do that. Not exactly, Wouldn't but you Wouldn't Bill were... Parrish have lost if he'd gambled with you? He might have. That don't say that we with would... With the two of you working together, you'd have been more than a match for him. That's certain. All right, it, it's our business. What about it? Is it only money you're after? Mm, that's part of it. Seems mighty funny to me that a masked man can look down on a gambler. We don't break the law anyway. Neither do I. I'll let Greg finish answering my question. Money's only part of your reason. It's the rest of it. Excitement. I thought so. Have you had some excitement today? Yeah, we liked it, too. I know you did. Don't you feel a lot better than if you'd won the Winton's outfit by playing poker with young Jimmy? Say, what do you take us for? Yeah. yeah there wouldn't have been much difference between him and uh, Bill Parrish. Now, look here, mister. We're riding with Mrs. Winton and Jimmy, and we're seeing to it that they get to all their safe. We're not the kind of coyotes that take advantage of people like them. If I don't think there was some good in you, I wouldn't have wasted my time with you. Huh? You're both young and strong. You're the kind of men the West needs. Not if you stick to gambling. Hoping you'll find out there's a lot more satisfaction and a lot more excitement in playing a different game. What? Fighting to make a place for yourself out here. Working to build the West. Messman, Tonto just told me who you are. What did he? He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? That's right. We're sure proud to meet up with you. But Tonto says you're going to ride on ahead. We'll make sure the trail's safe. And if it is, you'll keep on to the diggings? That's our plan now. Well, naturally, we'll take a lot longer with the wagon. I was just wondering if you'd stop at my husband's cabin and tell him we'll be there in a few days. We'll be glad to. And tell him you left us safe. And that we won't have any trouble with Greg and Silk keeping us company. I'll tell him that, too. Steady, big fella. Think over what I've said, men. You ready, Tonto? Be ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come Hold on. Hi, mass man. Oh, Let's see. Uh, here it is. The name on the stake is Ben Winton, Tonto. This must be his cabin. Uh, it's nearly midnight. We we'll deliver our message and then make camp beyond the gulch. Uh. Who's there? Friend! You. you can come in in a minute. Something strange about his voice, Kimosabe. I'm going to take a look in the window. What him do with that gun? Quick, Tonto, we got to break in. <coughs> Oh, get out of here. Let go of my arm. You can't stop me. Oh, Keep it from me. I, I've killed him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto broke into Ben Wenton's cabin, the miner had a gun in his hand. Quickly, the masked man reached for it, but before he could twist it out of his grasp, Ben pressed the trigger. He must have you. Where bullet hit you? It's just my arm, Tonto. It's only a scratch. I don't need to take a look. I, I'm glad. I didn't mean to shoot. You didn't I... mean to shoot me, but you were going to use that gun. What if I was? I want to know why. Ah, uh, wound not bad. This do for bandage till we get to camp. Why, Ben? You'll get nothing from me. You're wearing a mask. You're holding a gun on me. All right, go ahead and shoot. The only reason I'm holding this gun is to keep it away from you. What's that letter on the table? You can't read that. I'll have to. Get out of here. You not talk like that. This Lone Ranger, him try to help you. The Lone Ranger? Huh. Oh, it's no use. Nobody can help me. Well, what's the matter with you helping yourself? I don't see why you wanted to gamble away a good claim, but if you've lost this one, why don't you stake another? I... Oh. Quick, Tonto. Don't catch him. <laughs> Lower him into that chair. Um, let me put him down here. I... You don't have to answer. You aren't well enough to go on prospecting. I'm done for. What difference does it make how I cash in my chips? My wife and boy are coming up here. There's still money enough in the bank to get them back home. I can't face them. You aren't a coward. I never have been till now. I wrote them so much about my claim, though. They'll expect so much, and there's nothing left. Why didn't you think of them before you gambled? I haven't been able to work for a couple of months. It was just to get a little ready money to fix the place up. I started to lose, and I kept on getting in deeper and deeper and... until I couldn't quit. Who owns your claim now? Ace Harding. I've got to be off the land by the end of the week. Tonto, what do you think? Uh, him not die. You hear that, Ben? And this fever, Tonto make medicine. Make him well in two weeks. In, in two weeks? Now, do you feel any different? Oh, well, sure, if he means it. He isn't just trying He means it. it. He wouldn't say it if he didn't. Then I can work again. I can make a living for Martha and Jimmy. Of course you can. Uh, better him go to bed now. All right, Kimosabe. We're going to stay here, Ben, and take care of you until your wife arrives. I don't know exactly when that'll be. We have a message from them. They should be here the day after tomorrow. Perhaps then... Uh, then what? I, uh, I have an idea, Ben. We may be able to do something about your claim. <laughs> not until the Winton family was reunited that the Lone Ranger spoke of the claim again. But this time, it was not to Ben. He and Tonto and Greg and Silk were unloading the wagon at the rear of the cabin. Have you decided what you're going to do, Greg? Yeah, we're going to rent a cabin in town. Near the cafes? Yeah, just for a while. We thought we might try our hand at prospecting. That would be good news. Miss Winton told us how much money Ben's making on this claim. Was making. Yeah, I mean, until he took sick. We can do half as well. It's better than poker. Greg... Did you ever hear of a man named Ace Harding? Ace Harding? Why, that poor cat. If you judge all gamblers by him, no wonder you don't have a good opinion of the breed. Is he crooked? He's a hound's hind leg. Why are you asking about him? Well, he's the man who owns this claim. He won it from Ben last week at poker. Huh? He cheated him out of it. You can bet on that. Do you think you two are a match for Ace? I should smile. We know all these crooked tricks backward and forward. He steers clear of any game we're in. Kimosabe. Yes, Tonto? Their boy at corner cabin. Maybe him hear you. I'll talk to you two in town tomorrow night. Come on, Jimmy. And a hand with these supplies. The following night, Ace Harding stood at the bar in the Golden Nugget Cafe and called for drinks for the house. Sit on the... Drinks are on me. It's Ace Harding that's buying, boys. Step up and quench your thirst. You're Ace Harding. None other, Sonny. The one and only Ace. There ain't a man in the gold country can stand up to me. I get blast and powder in both my fists. I don't give no odds to a grizzly. And what's more... And what's more, you're a crook and a cheat. What's that? You cheated my part of his claim. You got to give it back. Who are you? I'm Jimmy Winton. You cheated my paw. Who let this youngin' in here to play me? You're a crook. You shut your mouth. I won't. I'm not as scared of you. Then I'll shut it for you. Pick him up. Drag him out of here and hurry up with those drinks. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto swung into the saddle and gave their great horses free rein. They left their well-hidden camp behind and raced toward the town where they'd promised to meet Silk and Greg. 
But a mile from the outskirts, they saw a slight figure riding toward them. As they drew closer, the Lone Ranger recognized him. Hello, that's Jimmy Whitten up ahead. That's right. Rain up, Jimmy. Oh. Easy, boy. Oh. Easy. Woo. Howdy, mass man. What are you doing so far from home at this time of night? I, I've been into town. Oh, what for? I had some... It's a business to take care of. You've been crying, Jimmy. No, I haven't. Your jaw. What's happened to it? I don't care. He's bigger than I am now. But just wait till I grow up, then I'll show him. Who are you talking about? Nace Harding. I told him he was a crook. And did he hit you? I don't care. I'll show him. Ace Harding can't wait until you grow up to be shown. Now you go straight home. Yes, sir. Get up there. Get up. Otto. Uh, you know where Greg and Silk are staying? Uh, time to show you. We'll stop there first. And we're going after Ace. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. On, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode into town. At a sign from the Indian, they swung to the left at one of the cross streets and pulled their horses to a sliding stop in front of the third cabin from the corner. In a flash, the masked man was out of the saddle and knocking at the door. Greg opened it. There was a hurried conference. And then, once more, the Lone Ranger was in the saddle. This time, he rode alone, back to the main street, straight down it till he reached the Golden Nugget Cafe. His feet were on the ground before Silver had stopped completely. Up the steps and across the porch. A moment later, inside the cafe... Up with your hands, all of you. Ace Harding. What do you want? I'm here. Joe, are you going to stand by and do nothing when a hold-up man walks into your place? I'm here, Harding. No, 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 don't shoot. I'm coming. Make it fast. Yeah, 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 sure thing. Now, out the door. Where are you taking me? You'll find that out soon enough. Move. This is... This is my own cabin. Just walk right in. Keep going. Where? What's the idea? You'll find some friends waiting for you in the next room. Friends? Look, you can't get away with this. Here he is, men. Silk and Gray. Howdy, Ace. <laughs> You're just in time for a little poker. Draw up a chair. Yeah, I don't want to. You can't... Can't what? All right, I... I'll play. That's better. Otto, you now wait out in the front room. Gentlemen, we leave you to your game. Now, before we sit down, Tonto, we'll just lock the door. You were sorry. You awake? Yes, Tonto. It'd be morning one more hour. I know. The game's lasted a long time. Uh, you tell Greg Silk to play for her? Yes, I did. They'll see to it that Ace does, too. But maybe them not win. They don't? Well, that's too bad. I still have a little score to settle with Ace, but... Uh, somebody knocking the door. Let's see what they want. Well, Greg? Hmm, want all Ace's money. He wants to play some more. They can't quit now. I got the deed to a claim in the drawer of this table. Look, I got a pen and ink here. I'm signing it over. And that makes it just as good as cash. How much cash? $10,000. He only allowed Ben Winton 5000 when he put it up. All right, 5000 You can't quit. We won't, mister. <laughs> Come on back. Well, we wait some more, Toto. <laughs> Him want to keep on, huh? Yes. <laughs> so did Ben. <laughs> Kimosabe. Uh, uh, there come knock again. Oh, let's hope. Well, it's all over. Is it? Here, will you take this bill of sale? It's signed by Ace, but it isn't made out to anybody, so you can just hand it over to Ben and he, he wouldn't have to know how he got it. That might be a good idea. You could just say that Ace had a, a change of heart and decided to give it back. I'll let the paper speak for itself. Now, uh, what about you two? Well, we got quite a lot of money. We we thought maybe we'd buy a claim of our own. Do it today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to, only... Um, only... Uh, we don't know anything about mining. You can learn. Sure, especially if we had somebody to teach us. So we, we figured that Ben might let us work his claim for a while. 
Until he got on his feet again. If we worked at his place, he'd be close enough to give us his advice. You understand? Yes, I understand. I don't think you'll have any objections. I'm sure you won't. Goodbye, Greg. Goodbye, Silk. Oh, <laughs> we're not leaving yet. Oh, why not? Mainly because you're not. Well, I just have a little business to settle with Ace. He's right in the other room, still sitting at the table. We'll wait here for you. Excuse me. Stand up, Ace. Huh? What do you want now? You're a big man. Most people seem to be afraid of you. Personally, I think you're yellow. Why, you? If you're not, why did you stop then? Let's try pretending that I'm Jimmy Winton. Oh, to help your courage. You're a gunman. There. My guns are on the table. Now listen closely. Jimmy said you were a crook. That's a lie. It's the truth. You're a crook and a coward. But I'll show you. He missed it. The masked man's like lightning. Well, Jimmy said someday he'd show you. Are you? I'll take this with his compliments. Oh. Knocked him out with one punch. He's dead to the world. Uh, let's go, Tonto. Well done that good work, Kimosabe. Tonto ready. Adios. We'll be seeing you. So long. Goodbye and good luck. Bye. Well, <laughs> pick up that bucket of water. Right. Give it to him. What the... <coughs> what hit me? <laughs> he wants to know what hit him. <laughs> Mister, that was the Lone Ranger. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.